This video has been brought to you by Wowbox, the yummy subscription service that delivers to your door one-of-a-kind and often limited edition treats from Japan. This time, they will be sending limited edition Sakura-flavored snacks if you subscribe to their original Wowbox by February 29th. And if you may or may not have noticed, but their boxes are actually cheaper now. Wow! So when you ordered their large WoW box, it usually costs $35, but this time it is down to $27, and that's a good price. And also this is very important, if you want this particular bottle of strawberry flavored Coca-Cola, this is an add-on. So when you purchase your WoW box, you also have to add on the 500 milliliter beverage of strawberry Coca-Cola. I've had raspberry, and I've had coffee flavored, yes there was coffee flavored, Coca-Cola. Oh my, wow, that is strawberry. I never had a uh, strawberry flavor Coca-Cola. Here we go. Okay, I have a new favorite beverage now, excuse me. <laughs> Seriously, this is actually really good. I want more. This is by far one of the most special boxes I've ever gotten from them and definitely can say these are all really tasty. So if you're interested in this limited edition box, subscribe to Wow Box by February 29th and get your Sakura treats today. Remember that thing about opinions, guys? I mean, you're all here to see what I believe were the best anime of the past decade, but remember, lists like this are subjective and different for everyone. I'm sure you'll still say a few choice words in the comment sections down below, but just remember, this is my video and my choices. Which is probably the nicest way I'll ever say that. So this is a random topic for the month of love, but here we are. And while I was trying to get this one done last December, I realized that I hadn't really watched all the 2019 titles just yet and felt that I had to be fair and make sure I got this right. Now that I've done that and released the 2019 Anime Awards, seriously, go watch it. I can now get this top 10 list done and express to you which anime titles I believe were the best of the decade. And to fit this in with the month of love, um, we all love anime. There you go. So, with the many years I've hosted the Anime Awards and chosen which ones I felt were the best and worst, I took a look back at each year to see if my decision still held up. In some ways, I've changed my perspective on a few of these titles, while also acknowledging the other titles that may have had a bigger grasp on the anime community within the decade. It definitely wasn't easy coming up with the lists, and I'm sure all of you have your own picks of the best of the decade. Just keep in mind that this list is based entirely on my opinion opinion. You should also keep in mind that I am only choosing anime that was released between 2010 and 2019 from Japan. I mean, yeah, I'm sure I didn't have to say that, but I'm sure some of you are gonna complain if you don't see Soul Leader or Code Geass or something. Also, I've decided to leave out movies because that is something I could try to cover on another list entirely, since shows and movies are treated and created differently. With all of that in mind, which anime titles do I believe were the best of the decade? Let's find out with Anime America Top 10 Best Anime of the Decade A while it goes without saying, fandoms going up against each other are, well to say it politely, insane. insane. It seems every year there's bound to be fans of their own show going to war with other fans over which anime should be praised more. Needless to say, social media was a mistake. Of all the years I've covered anime, none were as emotionally driven by the fandom than 2016. So honestly, no matter what anime title I put here from 2016, I'm bound to hear some disagreeing arguments from the other fandoms. But hey, remember what I said about opinions. <laughs> Yuri on Ice from the Fall 2016 lineup. This, to me, is still a beautiful show of love, patience, courage, and acceptance. Two very different skaters with the same name are showing us how anxiety can affect one's mind, despite how hard they've been trying to accomplish their goals. Could the animation be better? Yeah. Could the story have been better if it was given more episodes? Yeah. Do I still appreciate everything it was aiming to be while being one of the most heartwarming titles ever made? Hell yes. 
I've been watching this series on repeat non-stop because of the message it was trying to deliver while accompanied by some of the sweetest characters ever made. I highly recommend this title to anyone who just needs a positive series full of love and acceptance. So while I put this particular title lower than Yuri on Ice during the 2016 Anime Awards, this show just kept delivering one epic series with every season they kept producing. The same can be said with other titles like Attack on Titan and Food Wars, but this one really pulled in people's attention and became one of the most recommended titles to start new fans. My Hero Academia from the 2016 Spring lineup. I myself can't necessarily say I'm a huge fan of this series, but I still praise it and recommend it to anyone trying to get into anime. It starts off with a simplistic story about a boy who just wants to be a superhero just like his favorite hero, All Might. But it's not that simple when he wasn't born with a quirk. It's not necessarily a new idea, but with a lead like Deku, you're bound to watch more just to see how far he's willing to go to accomplish his dreams. Despite his obstacles and the villains he comes across, you cheer for Deku and want to see him and his friends win win no matter what. With every new season comes new praises and appreciation, nothing but positivity from the story and from its beloved fans. <laughs> okay, for the most part, positive. Hashtag we support Horikoshi. So yeah, just for how well this series developed and took over the anime community, My Hero Academia definitely deserves a spot on this list. When I look back at the 2013 Anime Awards, I felt like there was one title that we really didn't praise enough. Would I keep Silver Spoon at number one? Probably. Free at number two? Yeah. Attack on Titan at number three? Sure. Kyokai no Kanata at number four? Yeah, I guess. Eccentric Family at number five? Eh, nah. Not really. What I mean to say is only a few of these titles can still hold up as timeless classics, but maybe there was one title from this year that could have been on the top five instead. At the very least, people are still praising it for its originality and insane animation. Kill La Kill from the 2013 fall lineup. The series that put Trigger on the map and reminded us the true spirit of anime. It's insane, it's unique, it's bright, bold, risque, and just a blast to watch. You tune into every episode just to see what else this studio can animate, and you are never disappointed. Who knew that a simple revenge story could turn into one of the most glorious spectacles we've ever seen in anime? But it goes to show that you can still take an old idea and turn it into something new. gave us an amazingly hilarious story of a superhero that got bored with his powers. It was interesting with its idea, and also awesome to watch with its impressive animation. Definitely the best of its year, but it was followed by a disappointing sequel that left many fans upset. Four years waiting for a continuation, only to deliver a cluttered mess. If only there was a 2015 title that stood up amongst other titles that year, while also giving us one of the most memorable finales to ever make us all cry. Assassination Classroom from the 2015 Winter Lineup. No one could see a story about an alien teacher threatening to destroy Earth in one year could turn into something so beautiful and thought-provoking. What started off as a hilarious idea about a bunch of kids given the task to kill their teacher before time runs out turns into a touching story of self-worth and improvement. So what if society thinks you're nothing but garbage? Rise up and believe that you can be more than that. It's a touching series packed with a lot of emotional depth and a lot of tears. Years. And it's a series that is still praised to this day. I couldn't recommend this series enough, so definitely check it out if you haven't. Now I know a lot of you watching this aren't just kids, and even if you are, please know that my videos were never intended to be made for kids despite us talking about Japanese cartoons. And if Copa disagrees, then might I suggest a lovely copy of Pupa for their kids to watch. Anyways, a lot of shows tell a story that reach out to their targeted audiences of young to old, and we can all walk away from these shows in the past decade carrying their lessons with us. Then a certain series in 2018 grabbed our attention with its theme while packing in a message that all of us need to hear, adult ain't as much harder than you believe it is. Aggressive Retsuko from the 2018 Spring lineup. Given to us by the lovable animation and product studio Sanrio, yeah, the cutesy people who made Hello Kitty gave us this. Pushing us around where we can't 
Aggressive Retsuko was a story showcasing the real trials and stresses of being an adult even when you worked hard in school to get your degree. For being such a cute-looking show, this story gets to the heart of the matter while reassuring the audience that it's not easy for everyone. It's a massive slap in the face for young adults thinking life will be perfect because they worked hard for it. But Aggressive serves as a reassuring message that it's gonna be okay. Life isn't what you expected, and sure, you may have to take things in a bit slowly, but it'll be fine. Both seasons to me delivered their adult messages beautifully, and it's a great series I can't recommend enough. So far, I've covered titles from 2013, 2015, 2016, and the 2018 lineup. You may be thinking my memory is the size of a goldfish at this point, but this is where I take you all the way back to 2010, a simple time where anime titles were few but memorable. And I realized that I started the Anime Awards back in 2011, so I really had to go back and remember what anime released around that time. But then, one title popped up on my screen that made me think to myself, beyond a shadow of a doubt, Yes, this was the best one. Angel Beats from the Spring 2010 lineup. A true gem among school life dramas, this show has random school kids finding themselves at this strange high school despite the fact that they're actually dead. They don't really know why they're there, so some of the students just carry on like this is fine, while our main characters desperately try to find the truth. It's such a beautiful series full of amazing characters who have their own heart-wrenching stories. So by the time when they realize why they're there and discover something within themselves, you can't help but cry for them. I mean, I will never forget the incredible moments with Iwasawa singing her heart out to that song, My Song. The episode with Yui opening up about her past to Hinata. And that bittersweet and tearful moment between Otanashi and Kanade in the final episode. It's a touching series that became an instant classic to many and truly was a beautiful way to start the new decade. <laughs> Everyone on Twitter tuned in to Funimation's fan-voted Best Anime of the Decade list, which only led to the fans choosing Demon Slayer as Best Animated Series of the Decade. Right. And I get how people praise that one scene from episode 19, but many felt that that one scene alone cannot define an entire decade. Especially when you remember that one studio that kept getting praise after praise after praise for giving us some of the most beautiful animation of all time. Granted, I would love to give this slot to every Kyoto animation series produced within the decade, considering how they just kept giving us amazing shows throughout the decade, like Kyokai no Kanata, Hibeki Euphonium, Tamako Market, Free, Chinibio, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, Silent Voice, and so much more. But if I were only allowed to choose one title from this beautiful animation studio, it would have to go to the best anime of 2018. Violet Evergarden from the Winter 2018 lineup. This is Kyoto Animation at their best by far. Not only does the series have some of the most amazing pieces of animation we've seen from this company, but it's all accompanied by one hell of a story. A former soldier who became notorious for her deadly skills now has to live a life outside of the war while learning how to use mechanical hands. She knows nothing but war and death, so now we have to watch this emotionless woman discover the meaning of love and how words can affect everyone's hearts. A breathtaking story with a lot of heart and bittersweet tears. Violet Evergarden proves that Kyoto Animation still is one of the best studios to create beautiful masterpieces in the entire world. And even with that devastating fire that nearly burned away everything they had, they're going to rise up and create more masterpieces for us to enjoy in the next decade and so on. And I for one cannot thank Kyoto Animation enough. Thank you, thank you, Thank you to everyone at Kyoto Animation. I 
remember a time when isekais were so rare and few, to the point where we just blinked for one second in 2016 only to ask ourselves where the frick did all these isekais come from? They're practically coming in like they're being manufactured on conveyor boats, but at least a few of them try to subvert our expectations. From creating an overly cautious hero to giving us the most hilarious heroes to ever be in an isekai, at least we can say for now that this particular genre still has a few new tricks up their sleeves. In comes 2019 with their plethora of isekai anime which were either dull or kind of interesting. But then there was one title that not only started off the year right, it took the very appealing ideas of a general isekai and turned it into something much darker. The Rising of the Shield Hero from the Winter 2019 lineup. Like any other isekai, this show stars our main character being summoned into another world and is asked to protect their kingdom along with three other heroes. But then he's suddenly accused of a crime he did not commit, and is thus treated like a criminal and given unfair disadvantages, while still expected to save their kingdom. It's an emotional roller coaster constantly pushing our main character to the brink of his limitations. You're angry for him and want things to be fair for him, like with any other show. But that's not what the SHIELD hero is trying to be. And I get that some people can't watch this show fully, as seeing these awful villains at their worst can make anyone too anxious to keep watching, but many kept watching to see what Naofumi would do. What is it that he can do in this new world despite having every disadvantage tossed at him without going insane? This to me made me feel like a real fan for anime all over again as I kept wanting to watch more and buy all of the merchandise. Needless to say, I haven't felt this way in years towards a new title. I wanted to see what Naofumi could do and to see if he was ever going to escape this unfair circumstance. I, for one, could not turn away from it and I still praise it to this day. One can only hope that the next season will be even better. Please god don't be another One Punch Man season 2. Lord knows I can't take too much disappointment in my life. <laughs> rolled by this decade, one can say many titles did their utmost best to subvert your expectations. It always seemed like just because a handful of these titles pulled off this feat brilliantly, many more had to try and subvert our expectations even more. What if the isekai hero was a selfish otaku and was paired with incompetent companions? What if the superhero got bored with his powers? What if these girls were granted weapons that slowly drained away their very lives? My god, that shit suck, but you see where I'm going with this. And say what you want about this sudden phenomenon that is known as subverting expectations, but quite honestly, they all have this brilliant show to thank. <music> Maho Shoujo Madoka Magica from the Winter 2011 lineup the famous magical girl show that turned to the dark side by episode 3. To put it simply, two best friends, Madoka and Sayaka, discover that magical girls do exist, and they too can become magical girls, if they agree to a contract made by one of anime's biggest traps, Kyubei. And without spoiling too much for a 9 year old series, they slowly discover that being a magical girl isn't all that's cracked up to be. Cue in the Rob Schneider joke right here. But like with the rising of the shield hero, Madoka Magica pushes the envelope by giving us a darker and warped version of a typical magical girl series. Yes, our girls get their wishes granted and can have their own sparkly transformation sequence, but for a very sick and twisted cost. A dark classic was born that year, spawning a few movies and a new alternate series that is just airing now. It took the community with its dark idea and we still praise it to this day. And we still joke about mommy getting ahead of herself. <laughs> so here's where the honorable mentions come in and let's just say there's a lot of titles I couldn't turn away. This might be a bit long and your favorite anime of all time may not even be featured but just remember this whole list is just based on my opinion. Please remember that.
how can I do it? How can I choose just one series to define the past decade? It honestly felt like I couldn't. Like any other show I'd choose for this spot, it felt like I couldn't truly justify it being better than the rest. But then I remembered one particular series that kept popping up through the decade. One that kept releasing new seasons with even more memorable characters, outrageous designs and animation, and even, dare I say it, some of the most memorable memes that we all use unashamedly. Let's just say back in 2012, the anime world suddenly became bizarre. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure from the Fall 2012 lineup and beyond. This show conquered the entire anime community with its insane characters, memorable catchphrases that we all quote, You expected a meme, but it was me, Theo! And the incredible memes that we all still use. What starts off as a show about a troubled young man, yeah, that's an understatement, trying to overthrow the Joestar family suddenly turns into this over the top roller coaster that we could not look away from. It's bold, it's loud, it's hilarious, it's bizarre, it's insane, and it's unforgettable. This series, along with Stardust Crusaders, Diamond is Unbreakable, and Golden Wind, had us all sucked into this bizarre world while loving everything it gives us for its amazing spirit wonderful animation, outrageous characters, and unforgettable catchphrases and memes, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, I can honestly say, without a shadow of a doubt, the entirety of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is definitely the best anime of the past decade. I'm sure many of you won't agree with this list, but again, it's my video and my opinions. But I would love to hear your thoughts on what you think was the best anime of the past decade in the comments down below. I did my best to choose the ones I personally felt did their best work in the past 10 years. But I know this list is completely subjective and we all know that not everyone is going to have the same taste in anime. So again, feel free to tell me down below which ones you thought were the best and what you thought of my choices. This was definitely an interesting decade, but I am looking forward to the new decade and to see what Japan has in store for us next. And they're already starting things off interestingly with a show like Interspecies Reviewers 2, which uh... <laughs> Oh, I have a new favorite. This is my guilty pleasure now, and I'm definitely going to review it when it's all finished. I'll let you know when that happens if you follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Anime America Podcast was created in 2007, and we've been given our opinions on anime ever since then because of you awesome people. I cannot express how grateful I am to a lot of you out there, and I can't thank my Patreon supporters enough. You all have kept this channel alive and thriving, and I truly appreciate your amazing generosity. More awesome videos will be on the way, so stay tuned to Anime America.